All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to teach you how to make your very own sound bar. Now, what you're going to want to do is have all one quarter inch material of MDF and walnut. Your walnut, you're going to want cut down uh, three pieces down to 12 inches and two pieces down to 12 and a half inches. Now, you're going to take two of those 12 inch pieces and you're going to measure the very center of it. When you find the very center, you're going to measure your tweeter so that you can cut out a hole that is the same size as the tweeter. Now once that gets cut out, you're going to go ahead and do a simple round over on it, something between one quarter inch and one eighth inch. And you're going to glue it to one of the 12 and a half inch pieces. Uh, you see I'm doing that right now. Uh, that's going to give you about a half inch overlap and that's okay. That's what we're going to glue the other 12 inch piece to later. So now you're going to have two of these that look exactly the same. Now after that dries, we're going to go ahead and cut out the woofers and that's going to go through both the pieces of wood that were just glued together. All right guys, next thing to do is to cut out the back of where the tweeter is going to go. Now you're going to notice that I did not cut out the woofers first on this particular one that I'm showing you. You can cut the woofers out first or second. It really doesn't matter. Um, but what I use is I use the cutout that I took from the tweeter and that's how I find the direct center. I put it right back in and mark the hole. And I'm going to drill out a hole. Now when I when I cut out this hole right here, I am actually going to cut it out bigger than the back of the tweeter. And the reason why I do that is so that it gives me some maneuverability and a little bit of wiggle room just in case I don't cut it directly center. And we're just going to test fit that and that looks really nice. And so we're going to go ahead and round over all of the woofers, which I did not get video of, but you'll round those over with about a 3 8 inch round over bit. And then you're going to want to glue the front baffle together. So take that last piece of 12 inch that you have left over of walnut and glue it to those half inch pieces that are sticking out. Uh, glue it right on top of those. That way you have one nice solid piece of wood. Well, now that we have the front baffle done, we're going to just uh, create a rear baffle that's the exact same size as the front baffle. The reason why we're going to do that is, uh, you see, I am gluing on the sides, and while I'm gluing those on, uh, I want to be able to use the front and rear baffle to line everything up perfectly. And so I'll, I'll use those uh, to set in to make sure that we have a nice square surface. Uh, you also notice the uh, top and bottom of the box are longer, so typically the end product is going to be 36 and a half inches long. This is closer to 37 and a half inches long, and that's just so I can make sure that I have everything perfectly square. It helps me get a much better box, and, and then I'll flush trim those other pieces off later. So there's no reason to have it cut perfect. Uh, most of the time you're not going to have it cut perfect and you're going to have a box that you're not going to be very happy with. So once you finish that, also glue on the top and you'll once again use that front and rear baffle to make sure that everything is nice and square. All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and flush trim the box. Uh, just put a flush trim router bit on there and run it over and you should have a nice very solid square box when you're finished. Now it's time to create the boxes. We're basically going to have a speaker box on either side of the sound bar with the middle part uh, able to housing the crossover components and of course the amplifier if you choose to amplify this internally. Now uh, what you're going to want to do is use the front baffle as a guide. So put the front baffle in and where it sticks out a little bit higher, which is a half inch, we're going to glue um, some pieces on either side of that so that we seal that box nice and even. Now this should be a quarter inch from the edge of the box so that the rear of the baffle can still fit in. We're also going to want to glue one right next to it. This one that is glued next to it is going to be a half inch from the rear of the box and uh, that's because we're going to go ahead and make the rear baffle of each speaker enclosure a half inch thick. And so we're going to glue a piece that perfectly matches the inside uh, of that compartment. And uh, while we're at it, we're going to glue some smaller pieces in the center. 
uh, make sure that this doesn't get in any way at the screw holes uh, and also make sure you have plenty of room to navigate speaker wire uh, once you're finished. So go ahead and glue those in and that will just help with flexing of the box. Next thing we're going to want to do is cut out some holes in the rear baffle. Now the size of the holes is not important. These are not going in the speaker compartments. These are going in the middle section. In this middle section, the reason why we're putting a couple holes here is one to help an amplifier breathe if you choose to put an amplifier in here. And the second thing is to also help with removing the rear baffle if you ever need to take it off. And after you're finished with that, you're going to want to prime and paint the box. Now, this box is made of MDF, so I use a shellac based primer. It works very well. And um, we're also going to want to paint that after the primer dries. Now, um, you can paint that with whatever you want. Now, I will tell you that the shellac based primer works a lot better than just a paint and primer in one. So I would do that first and then paint it with whatever you want to paint it with. At this time, you're also going to want to finish your front baffle. Now, finish this with whatever type of finish you like, so whether that be stain or sealer of some kind. Now, it's finally time to install the speakers. In order to install the speakers, we're first going to need to mount them to the baffle. Now, the woofers themselves are going to be rear mounted, and that can be sometimes problematic as far as lining them up properly. What I've learned is to take a little bit of masking tape and tape it to the woofer once you have it aligned. That way when you flip it back over to drill your holes and screw your screws in, your woofer's in the same place it was previously. And that helps installation quite a bit. Now with the tweeter, it's not as hard because you can line it up from above wall while looking at it. Once you do that, we are gonna need to uh, solder some wires to the speakers, the tweeter is going to be soldered just like normal, just a one positive and one negative, but the woofers themselves are going to be wired in parallel. That's going to drop the 8 ohm load to 4 ohms, and that just means the positives are going to be connected to each other, and the negatives are also going to be connected to each other, and then there will be one line going out into the cavity of where you're going to have your crossover, and that line is going to connect to the crossover section. DIY soundbar, the only thing we have left to do is to glue on the front baffle. When we glue this on, we need to make sure that the glue doesn't seep out of the front or onto the wood that we just did. Now, just go along with a dry or damp cloth to clean up any glue that may have seeped out. Let that dry, and once that dries, just screw on the rear baffle. And once that's screwed on, hook up an amplifier to it. Now this can be either an internal or external amplifier. If you want it to be internal, just run it inside before you put the rear baffle on. If you're going to do external, just pick up any external amplifier and you are good to go. Now guys, you can pick up all these parts to create this right down from Parts Express. Uh, just follow the description in the link below to create this. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please give it a like, and as always, subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you. Counting double digit thousand.